and an Arab does something crazy and a white guy's watching the news in Colorado and he says, man, I hate Arabs. Okay, he said those words. Now, if the four of us, we're all Arabs and we're sitting in a room and a crazy guy does something on the news, an Arab guy and we go, man, I hate Arabs. Okay, those are the same words, but they mean <laughs> completely. They mean something context. totally different coming yep. from us than they mean coming from the white guy. From the white guy, he's not coming at it from a place of where he would like like to see Arabs improve. In fact, he might want to see them destroyed. And he doesn't <laughs> understand anything about Arabs. He has no context. He's probably uneducated about our culture and doesn't really know anything. Whereas when we say those same exact words, we're frustrated with the actions of this one person because it's going to make all of us look bad. We wish people didn't think in this way because we want our society to move forward. We come from the context and experiences of being Arab in this world. So, okay, right? So it's the same words, but we all understand that it means something totally different. Really? 185 or 186? 184. <laughs> 280. Yeah, I forgot 100 episodes. <laughs> We're like 280 something episodes in. <laughs> yep. Traveling around the world, and this is our first time in Michigan. Pretty much. Thanks. Basically. Yeah, so thank you. I'm Ed Zahir. <laughs> yep. Welcome on the show. Let the world the know who you are and what you do. I I don't know I I usually I mean I would have thought you would have known that you invited me to the show but, I mean, <laughs> but this gives us I'll tell you the whole concept of uh, why we do this because okay, we don't I mean, want to under in kindergarten can you introduce yourself to everybody <laughs> no, it's not. Oh, God. here we go here we go All right fine I'll tell you why we usually do this is because sometimes I mean is this what you do you hell our guest today is Barack Obama would you introduce yourself to everybody please? yeah like yeah. how would you introduce yourself because I, I can do it but I might under yeah do it or overdo it i don't want to so i leave it to the guests to introduce themselves the way they want to it's kind of you know could. ingenious <laughs> if i know it's obviously not, it's not <laughs> I mean, it kind of is well, though i get to you know it's obviously not working out the way you thought with you no but with like all 280 something guests it was, it was perfect okay my name is uh i'm at zahir i am a uh stand-up comedian and a lot <laughs> why do i always have a hard time getting along with arabic comedians there's something <laughs> like going on there like it's just i don't know I, yeah you always have this banter thing with comedians man it's just not working out for you it really isn't i should stop <laughs> the pro the problem the problem with being an arab comedian is when you deal with other arabs they <laughs> they always so Ar Ar every arab always thinks that they're the smartest smartest or funniest person in the room this is just a genetic thing that we have okay it could be and could be. and and as a result they always think that they can be like um they just always think they're funnier or smarter or whatever it is so you know we arabs have this disease where we believe that we can do whatever you're doing better than you can do it this is just a disease this is just what we believe okay Season this is why nobody goes out. to the doctor this is why very few people want to get the vaccine because they're on some fucking WhatsApp group with their whole family and they're just all know, you know, like they know more than the doctor. Okay. <laughs> and the same thing happens when you're a comedian is immediately people start to try to be funny with you. Okay. Now, com comedians, <laughs> comedi as comedians, we're, f we're, we're obviously we're in the business of humor, mm -hmm. but we're not in the business of using humor to make fun of people or to uh, 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 lie. A good comedian is in, we use humor to tell the truth. We don't use humor to, to, uh, uh, to, to lie or, or just to tell jokes about other people. And so, you know, um, unless it's people who hold power over you, then it's okay, right? But we don't just use jokes just to just tell. Anyway, so I mean, whenever I do a show invariably, Arabs always come up to me, usually older. No, I'm not saying Ali did this, of course. But, you know, Arabs come up to me and uh, they, uh, they, they. He sensed it <laughs> when, you, when you first came to the podcast. Arabs will always come up to me after one of my shows and they'll say, Amir, you are funny, very funny, very funny, hilarious. I have a joke for you. Oh, they always want to give me a joke. And. And they always say the same shit. You can use it. 
you can use it you can have it you don't have to tell anybody you're that welcome. i gave it to you it's okay you're welcome yeah i mean like you know and i don't use it because it's either like very dumb or or it's like the most racist shit i've ever heard in my life you know like i'll never it's use one of yeah i mean what are you expecting an arab basically gave you, know. you the joke so uh so you know but only i think only as comedians like i don't think i don't think anybody walks up to a singer i don't think anybody walks up to cosm is sad and says cosm man that was a great concert amazing here listen to me la, 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 la. <laughs> like nobody does that to a singer okay nobody does that to a singer you, you got the voice for that instead yeah. you don't have to yeah, nobody does it to a singer. Nobody does right. it to a poet. Nobody does it to. It's just oh, for some reason, and I think it's because it, it, it's 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 innocent. It's because Arabs still don't stand up comedy is a uh, newer art form in the Arab or Arab American experience. Only like maybe 10, 15 years right. old that they've been really familiar with. Storytelling is very old. We've had storytelling for forever. But comedy, the notion of making people laugh a lot when you're doing something, that's new. So they haven't, we haven't yet, and I'm, st I always struggle with this every day. We haven't yet fully respected it as a like an art form, and so, um, but it's getting there. It's getting there because our comedy has always been silliness for the last, you know, hundred years in the Arab world, and not critique. But we're we're getting there. And uh, we've seen a lot of growth in the last 10 or 15 years among, you know, especially in the Arab world. So uh, well, we're getting there where people respect it. But I'm still I'm yeah. still at the point where I'll do a comedy show in America and, you know, and I'll charge like three or four thousand dollars for one hour of work for a comedy show. And then the person paying me, the Arab paying me while they're giving me my check will say, so what is your uh, real job? And I'm like, what do you mean? Was my fucking real job? You just gave me three thousand dollars. This is my real job, I mean, you know. But they still don't get it. That's crazy. Yeah, it. But why is it that this is new to Arabs? I mean, because we like to, we genuinely like to laugh a lot. Except yeah. when it comes to critique, I think it's very, like, how hard was it as an Arab to do Arab jokes based on critique jokes, right? And like, like, how hard well, was it to introduce it? Because I know Arabs really don't like to be criticized <laughs> yeah well because because stand-up comedy mm -hmm. so there has been comedy so comedy and stand-up comedy are not the same thing right mm -hmm. so there's been comedy in the arab world for a long time uh, uh actors uh Adel Imam, you know all of these actors have been doing funny stuff on film for a long time but th the comedy that's always been in the arab world has never been critiques of anything mm -hmm. and it's always been a, a character so you're playing somebody else so Adel Imam in a movie or in a masrahi he's playing somebody else he's not being Adel Imam right he's playing somebody else the stand-up comedian is always being him or herself they're not doing a character so you are you are you on stage trying to um communicate your view of the world and your observations and experiences through comedy using laughter as a tool yes. i'm not on stage doing another character i'm on stage being my being myself and so and that's how every stand-up comedian should do it and you're critiquing life maybe sometimes it's government maybe sometimes it's just you know the mall or you know whatever but you're critiquing something you know you're talking about something relationships whatever um and then it gets into a different category of course when you're critiquing society and then you're getting to like government and you know all this kind of stuff so and and that's what is um a different so observational comedy is one thing and then com you know comedy that is critique is something else but we need that you know as arabs about our culture no matter where we live and about the and about governments and governments need to learn how to take it i mean you know just because someone critiques you you know <laughs> yep. arabs arabs we have this Arabs, we have this uh, uh, thing that, and it goes from the person all the way to the government, that if someone critiques you, it's like they want to destroy you. But I, just because I critique you doesn't mean I want to destroy you. You know, sometimes I critique you because I want you to be better. Exactly. You know, so I mean, you know, this, yeah. you know, this kind of stuff. So. <laughs> yeah, we it's saw that in Egypt with uh, Bassem Yusuf and his uh, show, where uh, he was he was always critiquing the president at the time. Who I think was uh, Hosni Mubarak. 
and uh, then they shut down the show and he can't go back to Egypt because well ba- because Basim of- Yusuf I think if if I'm right he started right after Mubarak got uh, got uh, uh, ousted but um yeah of course then you have him you know now he can't go back to Egypt because of the Sisi government and then you even see it with our intellectuals mm-hmm. so so like for a couple a couple um about a month ago or so, uh, the Egyptian feminist writer Nawala Sadawi died. And she's 90 years old and she died. Yeah. And, uh, you know, she spent a lifetime critiquing the Arab world and political Islam and the way religion plays in the Arab world and all this kind of stuff. And, you know, when she died, a lot of Arabs took it as a chance to call her like Islamophobic and she hates Muslims and hates Islam. And I'm like, dude, you know, you have you can't. It's so e- e- okay. Let me let me put it to you like this. All right, if 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 an Arab does something crazy on the news, okay, which you know happens every now and then, and an Arab does something crazy, and a white guy's watching the news in Colorado, and he says, "Man, I hate Arabs." Okay, he said those words. Now, if the four of us we're all Arabs and we're sitting in a room, and a crazy guy does something on the news, an Arab guy, and we go, "Man." I hate Arabs. Okay, those are the same words, but they mean <laughs> completely. They mean something context. totally different coming yep. from us than they mean coming from the white guy. From the white guy, he's not coming at it from a place of where he would like like to see Arabs improve. In fact, he might want to see them destroyed, and he doesn't <laughs> understand anything about Arabs. He has no context. He's probably uneducated about our culture and doesn't really know anything. Whereas when we say those same exact words, we're frustrated with the actions of this one person because it's going to make all of us look bad. We wish people didn't think in this way because we want our society to move forward. We come from the context and experiences of being Arab in this world. So, okay, right? So it's the same words, but we all understand that it means something totally different. It's all about context. But, Very true. Yeah. But for some reason, sometimes people can't see critique of ourselves as, as uh, somebody trying to make things better. So, you know, take someone like Nawala Sadawi. She was a fierce, look, she used harsh words. She was a fierce critic. She made uh, uh, extreme examples. She was, but I don't think anyone can question that she she did these things because she wanted to see her society get better. Not because she wanted to see her society destroyed. I guess tough I mean, love she had, to love. Yeah, right. I mean, it's, 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 it, you have to look at someone's intention and you can't assume you know, so whatever. I mean, you know, th- this is this is something that happens in every culture, I think. You know, it happens in America too, right? Yeah. I mean, you have the right wing of America, Trump people, when you can, when you critique America, especially if you're not white, they tell you, well, get out of here. You know, if you don't like it, leave. Mm-hmm. And, you know, okay. so it's not, this is not something unique to Arabs. We just feel it more because we're Arabs. Right. So I'm, I'm wondering, you said like uh, Arab for Arab comedians, it's kind of new, 10 to 15 years. I wonder how you got started, especially here in, in the United States, where think where people in America maybe are more critical of Arabs uh, or scared of Arabs, whatever. How did you get started? How did you get your foot in the door as a comedian? Wait, I just noticed. Is that Jasmine behind you? On, <laughs> on, <laughs> and, and, and Aladdin. And Aladdin. Jasmine world. and Aladdin. <laughs> yes. <laughs> This is like the most internally racist shit I've ever seen in my life. Like, like, you know how many times I told him to take that shit off and he won't, just won't listen. I mean, Aladdin, Aladdin is one of the most racist movies against Arabs. And, you know, but hey, you know, I mean, hey, look, Arabs do it all the time. Arab girls dress up as Jasmine every Halloween and they think yeah. like, you know, you know, it's okay. I mean, whatever. And then you have like white girls dress up like Jasmine and they think, you know, we're just a costume to them. But anyway, I just noticed Jasmine, Jasmine and Prince Aladdin. Ali. He even he he even calls him Prince Ali. You know, Prince Ali. He needs to have some relation you know, to you know. A yeah, this is something drawn. we've discussed with him. He's becoming yeah. a bit too Western for us. I mean, he's not even. He wasn't even Prince Ali. Prince Ali was his alter ego. Prince yeah. Ali was his was his like superhero vision. Like he wasn't even Prince Ali. He was he, just fucking was Aladdin. Just, yeah, basically from the Hara. He, yeah. You know, he just became Prince Ali to get this one chick that would have even, you know. But here we are today. I mean, look, Aladdin is one of the most racist movies. It ever. is. You know, here's what you have to. Here, it's very easy to break down Aladdin. Yeah. Okay, Aladdin. Okay, how, let me ask you guys. Percentage wise, what percentage of the characters in Aladdin are Arab? Like none, I would say. Take a guess. No, Wait, the mo- the movie, the cartoon. The All movie, the the, the Disney movie. How many Ali? Zero. No, one hundred percent. 
yeah, 100% of yeah. the characters in the movie <laughs> are Arab. Okay, except unless you want to leave out the genie, but 100% of the characters <laughs> and the monkey. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the whole movie is made in Agrabah, this fictional Arab land. Mm -hmm. And but everyone is Arab in the movie. No one is not Arab. Then why right? are they Bollywood dancing in the middle of the okay, movie? Okay, well, then, let me get to my fucking point. Let me get to my point. <laughs> <laughs> let me get to my point. So, so, so 100% of the characters are Arab. Okay, then you have. Uh, and then you have uh, Jafar. Okay, so look at, think of Jafar, Jafar, mm. who is, uh, he's Arab, okay? And he is tall, skinny, wears a turban, got a big nose. He has darker skin than everybody else. He's got a beard. He has an accent, okay? And he wants to take over the world and he's the evil one. Okay, he's the evil one. He's the, he's the most Arab and he's the most evil, okay? <laughs> And he was tall. He was Osama bin Laden before Osama bin Laden was Osama bin Laden. Okay, I mean, he was fucking <laughs> tall, skinny, turban, wants to take over the world. Okay, I... so and then there's Aladdin. Okay, Aladdin, who is also Arab, but speaks in a nice white suburban accent. Doesn't you know? Doesn't have any body hair, and may, maybe because he's a teenager, but. Arab teenagers have body hair, okay? He doesn't have any body hair. He 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 wears the cute little fez. Yeah, he I had sings, a beard that's you know. Yeah, he sings and all this kind of stuff. So he's really Americanized, okay? And he is. They all live. They don't. It's not like they live in suburban America. And his dad's an immigrant, and he's like. They all live in Agraba, okay? But he is very Americanized, and he's the good one, okay? And Jafar is very evil, and he's the most quote unquote stereotypically Arab one. OK, I mean, this is like the most racist shit. Ever. Imagine <laughs> if you had a movie that included all black people from the same neighborhood. Right. And the and the evil one was like, you know, super duper stereotypically black. What a brother. How you doing? You know what? A, you know, and and the and the good, the good superhero was a little black kid who speaks like every little white kid. I mean, that would be racist, right? It'd be really fucking racist. Yeah, this is course. exactly what they did in Aladdin. So anyway, Mabruk on your poster, your fucking poster behind you, you know, Mabruk. It's, it's, it's a carpet, to be fair. It is an actual magic carpet. Uh, oh, so it's an actual carpet. Okay. <laughs> yeah. so, you know. uh, also, another thing that I feel like they did wrong was with the costumes and like the designs. Like for when I was a kid, I even when I was a kid, I still noticed like this looks more like India than than an Arabic uh, country. Well, of course, of course. Planet. I mean, what is this portrayal? Yeah, they're wearing these like we don't, they don't do these dances. We don't dance. Yeah, at these all. baggy pants. Yeah, no, of course. Uh, everything about it. Nothing about it is accurate. Look, they're never accurate about us. They don't care. You know, they don't yeah. care. We're just characters or caricatures or evil to them. But anyway, you know, you know, Ali brings white girls back to that little room there. And he's oh, just <laughs> Ramadan Kareem, know? by the way. He has a, uh, hey, man, Ramadan it's Kareem. dark somewhere. <laughs> and he brings a <laughs> not here, buddy. <laughs> not here. We're still fasting up in here. You know? uh, um, anyway, back time. to your question. So I was in law school and oh. uh, I decided uh, I decided to try out comedy when I was in law school and I tried it out. I got on stage. I told a few stories about my dad. Everybody laughed. And I kind of got hooked. I was like, man, this is a pretty cool. I didn't know what I was doing. I mean, technique technique wise and how to handle the stage. I was very bad. But I told a couple jokes about my dad. Everybody laughed. And I was like, OK, this is pretty, you know, it's pretty cool. And um, when I graduated from law school, I said, OK, let me try this. And if I fail, I'll go become a uh, lawyer, you know. Um, but if I go become a lawyer now, I'll probably never try this. So um, I went and tried, you know, in the beginning for the first couple of years, I would just call up organizations around the country, Arab organizations that were having um, uh, events. And I would say, hey, guys, you want a comedian? And uh, if they would say yes, I would come down there and I would do their show. Now, uh, I would do it for free in the beginning. I would drive three or four hours just to get like practice on a stage, maybe get some people to know me. Um, and then somebody paid me 50 bucks and then somebody paid me 100 bucks and then somebody paid me 100 bucks and a dinner and a hotel and i was like all right that's pretty cool and then I've, you know first time somebody paid me 500 bucks i was like man i'm gonna be rich one day i'm gonna be rich and uh you know now on for you know fortunately i'm to a point where it's been a very successful career but it was a long road and uh, you know i'm glad i never 
you know, fully got into the to, to the lawyer thing because I would have never done this. This now has taken me around the world. Um, I've produced and started a few festivals around the world, especially one in Palestine that we do every year. So, I mean, it's been a pretty, pretty cool life. Uh, I can't complain. I mean, that's great to hear, honestly, and uh, it's really cool. But uh, so I was uh, I wanted to know, what's it like mm -hmm. doing a show in Palestine and where exactly do you do it? Do you do it in like the uh, occupied or occupation side of Palestine? Um, everywhere. So right. everywhere is Palestine. Oh, Obviously. wait, where is it here? Yep. Everywhere, everywhere is Palestine. Yes, here. it is. I mean, are we seeing that? So do we see the difference in um, in sort of sophistication? Just to point it out again, just one more time. So behind me is a map of Palestine. It is. And behind Ali is <laughs> Jasmine and Aladdin. Just so we just so we understand. Just I so mean, who's prouder of their culture? Okay, but anyway, so. I uh, mean, anyone <laughs> is when it's when compared to this guy, trust me. Hey, hey, hey. No, no, no. No, I think I think the Aladdin thing is a very weird expression of Arab pride. It is Arab pride, but it's just a little misguided. Uh, it's a joke. Just, it's a bit. I got it for a foam set. I got him. I just hung it up. It's a no. It's okay. You got it for white girls. You got it for he's white probably, girls. He's probably he having an identity crisis or something of that. No, he got it. So. No, he got it. For, he got it for white girls for when they come back to the little that little alcove or room that he's in, you know, and he just lays them down, and, you know, with his little. I will show you the way. <laughs> Still fasting. <laughs> Break it what a ride on my magic card. <laughs> 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 I'm just going. I'm just going with the flow, man. <laughs> Look, Ali, it's okay. You're, it doesn't. You don't break your fast unless you do it. Just having dirty thoughts doesn't break no, your fast. No, uh, listen. If having dirty, I don't know what they teach you guys over there. But if having dirty thoughts, if having dirty thoughts broke your fast, every man would break his fast like within five minutes of waking up. Okay, there is no. You, well, you know, you gotta control and discipline. You gotta, right? Well, self control is about actually doing something, but thoughts. You know, th self control is about you have a thought and then you don't do it. Self-control right, doesn't right. mean stopping your thought. You can't stop you have your thought. Discipline, which, which is, is also about your actions, but not about your thoughts. Very true. Fine. Very true. Not about I, your thoughts. I'll, I'll if we, if it was all based on our thoughts, then you know, I mean, come on, <laughs> we Listen, wouldn't all be here right now. Every man that okay. wakes up in Ramadan is thinking about one thing and one thing only: food, food, sex. Really don't think oh, all right. Sorry, I thought we were gonna. <laughs> I mean, listen, no man, let's just be honest. No man wakes up. Men don't wake up and not think about sex. We might think about other stuff too, okay? But we're, we're always thinking well, about sex. I mean, let's just be, be honest. No, no, that's not how life works. I mean, yes, and when we're hungry, we think about it more, not less. I mean, we think about it more, you know, we're on now I want a lot of food and I want more sex. You know, it's just oh, not, God, just not, I'm just, you know, this whole, okay, anyway. Hearing the word sex doesn't break your fast. I'm just hearing. Yeah, okay, it, that's you know. fine. But it puts a thought in there which was not there the whole day. Uh, you know. I okay, so up, try to like, control oh. yourself. So don't go do anything. Control yeah. yourself. <laughs> what okay. am I gonna do? The wall? <laughs> I'm in Arabia, <laughs> my guy. It's not how it works. I don't know, man. I've been to I've been to Kuwait. I've been to these places a few times. <laughs> Wait, wait, you know, people wait. get creative, you know, <laughs> I do, I do, do want to comment on, on something. So you were talking about how it's like control it is when you, you don't do the actions that you think about. And right. This is like, this is a, a lot like uh, I know this is a very this is this is an important topic for me since a lot of people will question. OK, so like when you share your thoughts or you're especially if they're, you know, a bit dark or, or maybe they're a bit wild and not they're unorthodox thoughts. People mm -hmm. were gonna are basically gonna have bad thoughts of you. They're gonna like want to stay away from you or like think you're a bad person just because you think of anything, right? Because you think of uh, like bad things, but everyone thinks about them. I mean, it's but they just don't share them. So, what do you what would you comment on this kind of like approach to a person? Well, this has a lot to do with sort of our Arabs. Uh, everybody. I mean, look, by the way, when we sit here and we talk about problems that Arabs have, these are problems everybody has, right? But we just, we, we're Arabs, so we're more sensitive to the problems our people have, you know? So do, we don't want white people watching this when we say, well, when Arabs do, everybody <laughs> does this stupid shit, okay? But, you know, we're just, we're talking about our culture, um, yeah. <laughs> you know? Uh, but, you know, this goes to some of the sort of like, um, 
the uh, uh, unwillingness in our community, for instance, to talk about mental health, you know, to yes. talk about depression, to talk about these things, because sometimes just talking about your thoughts is deemed as like Aib or weak or whatever, or even sometimes talking, whether it's talking about um, depression or talking about sex or talking about um, uh, gay rights or talking about whatever, you know, people say, oh, you talk about gay rights. That must mean that you're gay, which there's nothing wrong with being gay either. But I mean, that must mean that you're gay or you're talking about gay rights. That must mean you want gay people to take over everything. I'm like, you know, you know no, I'm just saying, first of all, I don't care if gay people take I mean, I don't see any evidence that shows like if gay people took over everything, it'd be a disaster. I mean, it, was, it sounds like it'd be a party. OK, it sounds like it'd be yeah. <laughs> sounds like it'd be a party. Everything would match. Everything would like be color coordinated. I don't really see the problem with it, but but uh, um you know, no, I'm just talking about, you know, people having the same rights as everyone else. Like maybe we should like, you know, guess what? They're normal and guess what? They're just, you know, they, they want to live their life or whether it's like talking about sex or talking about depression. Yeah. I mean, you know, we but Arabs for a long time, we've, you know, our art shows it. So uh, we we um, we talk about everything in metaphor, everything through poetry, yeah. <laughs> I know you know, stuff. so like, you know, every Arab song. Every Arabic song, not every Arabic song, but most, okay? They're, it's about sex, all right? It's about sleeping together. I mean, it's not right. about, okay? I mean, <laughs> yeah. it's not about love. I mean, they're about love, okay? But I mean, like, you know, but in America, things, you know, they'd just be, there'll be a song that says something really, you know, explicit about, you know, you know, about sex or yeah. uh, whatever. And then, you know, in Arabic, Arabic culture and Arabic language, we don't do that. It's a little bit, but it's the same subject. So, like, um, like, you know, okay, so Najwa Karam, she sang a song like 15 years ago where she says, uh, <laughs> Do you think she wants a glass of water? I don't think she wants a glass of water. Okay. She doesn't want a glass of water. I think I know what she wants. When she says, it's not, she doesn't want a blanket. Okay. She wants a man. She wants a person. So, you know, it's clear. You know, I mean, when when, uh, uh, you know, back in the day, even they used to do it back in the day, too, when the word they used, they never used the word sex. They never used the word sleeping together. They never used, but they used to use a different word. They would call it uh, Nishar. Oh, Sahar. You know, Sahar doesn't mean staying up late. OK, Sahar means, you know, you, there's things you Why do when talking? you stay up late. Because really talk like, we're talking about. But this, this is the one the, subject. These are the topics that we should talk about, Ali. Like, no, this is a uh, Muslim. Sayyid. <laughs> Billah. And I really, Saeed. No, but I mean, this is this is one of the things, Ali, is that is that we're having. This is what I mean. Okay. We're yeah, not, yeah, yeah. It's we're, cool. We're not having a disgusting graphic conversation no, 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 about no, no, like no. okay, but I'll, I'll, I'll entertain this conversation. Women or people, whole... we're talking about culture and the way things are taught, are communicated, <laughs> you know. And so, like, you know, if I was talking about bringing down a government right now, you would it wouldn't break your fast. But all of a sudden, like, you know, talking about you know metaphors that people use in songs is breaking a fast. I mean, it's not. It's really. I'll it's really. This. I'll entertain this conversation for a second, right? You know, so this might I mean, be you know, true. This, yeah. Right, Nishar and all that stuff might be true in, you know, your parts of the world in Arabia. But for us, our songs are very, you know, it's either about war or it's about... No, no, Ali, no, 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 no. You have no rights to come on anything as long as that Aladdin shit is in the back of your... So, uh, for us, it's mainly about going to war or... <laughs> I miss you, baby. Please come back. It's basically that. That's, that's the truth for us, it's a truth. Well, I mean, you know, first of all, we're all Arabs. Let's not break down between the different Arabs. Yeah, no, no, no. we are all Arabs. It has just, some Arab. We're all our cultures are very different. But Let's by the way, I mean, you know, fit, you know, the fit at Miami. They used to sing songs that had metaphors towards. Okay, you that's know, like <laughs> that's, that's one. I'm that's just true. saying. Yeah, that's I'm true. just saying. Every Arab, you know. You know, when when Wardi, when Wardi sings uh, her most famous song, Wardi, you know, What do you think she's talking about? I mean, what do you think she's talking about? What do you think they took? You know, it's not, it's right. different, man. True. It's different. So, um, what do you, why do you think people are scared of talking about like these thoughts? Because we all have them. We all it's not share scared. These it's called and people, especially about mental health and stuff like that. You're, you're right. Like. 
Um, I've heard my grandpa say, I remember once someone killed themselves and my grandpa was like, why was he so weak brained? Why would he do something like that? Right. I understand that there is such thing as mental health and people go through things. They're just like, rub some dirt on it <laughs> and right. be tough. And, um, but now I, I think we're realizing that mental health is uh, a real thing. I don't know. Why do you think people are scared? Well, well I mean, look, you know, first of all, let's be yeah. clear the the stigma of against talking about mental health is something that exists in every society. Again, that's not right. unique to Arab society. Mm -hmm. And even in American society where people think it's more advanced, there's still a stigma and the and the open talk about mental health is only probably 30 or 40 years old, too. So, um, you know, hopefully everyone in the world will be more comfortable talking about these things soon. But you know, if I have to think about it about Arab culture, you know, it's because we do have these notions of of um, honor and family and collectiveness. So, right. So if one person is, you know, uh, take depression or mental health out of it for a second. If one person in the family is a bad person or a murderer or a thief, it reflects on the whole family. Whereas in America, you know, what you do is only what you do and it doesn't reflect badly on the rest of your, you know, very individualistic culture. Where in Arabs, we have a very collectivist culture, which is beautiful in many ways. And it also means, though, that you have no privacy, you know, in our culture. You know, like I always tell this joke on stage where I say, you know, if a white guy commits a mass shooting, and well, it's always a white guy. So whenever there's a mass shooting in America and it's a white guy, they always go interview his neighbors and his neighbors always say the same thing. Like he was so quiet. We're so surprised by this. Um, uh, he's such a good neighbor. We haven't seen him in five years. Like they think that's an amazing neighbor. OK, yeah. whereas, you know, I live in a neighborhood here in Michigan where everyone is Arab. And if if Im Ali doesn't see Im Hassan for like 45 minutes, she calls the cops, you know, like I think she's going to come over, you know, so we 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 have this thing in our culture where there's no privacy okay but what does that mean that means like if anything happens to you everyone will take care of you so like the opposite side of that is i was walking around seattle with a a, a woman from gaza she lives in gaza and she just came coming to america for a little while and seattle washington like a lot of places in california uh, yeah, ali knows in la there's a huge homelessness problem okay yeah <laughs> ho homeless people everywhere and she's walking around seattle with me and she says to me shuhal araf i said what do you mean araf she says shuhal araf all this homeless people and it hit me at that point that she she comes from gaza okay not a rich place she doesn't she's not coming from dubai or anywhere else she come from gaza yeah and gaza has a lot of problems gaza is the most densely populated place on earth there's a blockade it's not easy to get jobs. It's not, but guess what? Guess what is not a problem in Gaza? Homelessness. Homelessness is not a problem in Gaza because Arab culture doesn't allow this. In other words, if you're if somebody is poor enough that they're out on the street, um, they're going to sleep somewhere that night. Their cousin's house, their third cousin's house. Like there isn't this thing that exists in America culture where if you're um, uh, so, for instance, in American culture, <clears throat> everyone's on their own. So if you're homeless, that's your fault. Whereas in our culture, if my brother is homeless, that's Sleeping. my fault. Yeah, that's yeah. He's that's gonna my fault. He's going to come stay with me yeah. uh, uh, in, in our culture. <clears throat> so in white culture, if 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 Ali is my son and he has a drug problem, I say, get out of my house. You don't come back here again. Whereas in Arab culture, if Ali is my son and he has a drug problem, I say, you're never leaving this house. <laughs> Right. It's the opposite. Yeah, 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 yeah. I say you're I'm the one who's going to protect you. You're never leaving this house. Yes. So this kind of stuff is 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 the cultural things that that because one person's problem in the family becomes everyone's problem. Everyone's so it's problem. not mm -hmm. like we don't want you to cure your depression. No, of course, we want you to cure. But we don't want anybody to know about it. Nobody can know about it. We, so we can't talk about it. Nobody can know about what's going on. So we can't have an open conversation. And I think we can all agree open conversations help things, right? So we should have more open conversations. But <clears throat> our culture is such in a way, and but there's beauty, right? So like if if I live here in Dearborn where it's all Arabs, if I don't have a lot of money one month, I go into the supermarket and I say, hey, you know, uh, I don't have a lot of money this month. Can I have my groceries? And he'll say, of course, you can have your groceries and pay me whenever you can pay me. And if you don't pay me, that's fine. We're all we're all in this mode of helping each other. Yeah. Um, but that also means that no one has any privacy. Right. That also means that, you know, you walk into someone's house and you say to them, wow, this is a beautiful house. Very nice. Very nice. How much you pay for it? <laughs> 
uh, you know, tell me how much you make a year before taxes. It's okay. I won't tell anybody. Like, you know, all this information, <laughs> we feel like all this information should be public information. You know, when it's, whereas to white people, your money is the most sacred thing that they have. They don't tell anybody about their money. You know, we tell everybody about our money, right? But there's mm-hmm. other things that we don't tell people about. So, you know, just cultures are, are different and, mm-hmm. but there's no, there's no, pri- no privacy in our culture. And this is what leads to then um, we, Arabs, we tend to have a very big divide between our public life and our private life. So how I am in front of people might be totally different than how I am at home because no one's supposed to know how I am at home. You know, that I'm different, you know. Um, uh, and in white culture, there's much less difference between their public life and their private life. Um, so, I mean, all these things. So I think right. this plays into the mental health thing, like why we don't talk about these things. It's not because we don't, know that it exists of course we know mental health exists it's not because we don't know that counseling might help somebody of course we know that somebody but it's because in ness nobody nobody can know and i think that's what it is you know because one what a good thing and the same for good things right like right if 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 ali is a doctor if ali is my son and he's a doctor guess what we're all doctors now right we're all he did that for the whole family he didn't only do that for him yeah and a sort of doctor you know and a sort of doctor we all know he's not going to be a fucking doctor one day okay we're all clear that ali is never is never gonna no i'm just kidding maybe he will be i don't know i just met the guy maybe he's like a fucking genius who wants I have no to tell idea. him who wants to tell him? Wait, which Ali are you talking about? Because one of them is, 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 is med school. Yeah. No, I'm definitely talking about Los Angeles <laughs> Jasmine oh, Ali. I'm not okay, I know. Oh, no. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, okay, that's cool. Yeah. No, it's very clear to me that Ali Shamari <laughs> follows the rules and he's going to just like do everything in life and he's going to, you know, he's very, you know, clean cut and he's going to be a doctor one day. That's very, very clear. To me, you know, uh, uh, other Ali, you know, yes. uh, he's not going down the regular road in life. I mean, look at the no. shirt. Look at yeah. the uh, <laughs> look at the everything, you know. Yes. But he could be a he could be a multi 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 millionaire one day. We don't know because he lives in L.A. and all <laughs> kinds of things. All kinds of things can happen. You know, this is you know. Since you're since you're since you're describing the people uh, the host right now, like what would you say about me? What, where did you say you were again? <laughs> I'm Lebanon. Okay, there's Lebanon. No so right yeah, so there's no. I don't even yeah, know how that's... you're joining us. You know, no with power. no electricity. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm no I don't know if you're just yelling really loud, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but uh, well, uh, oh, you live in Lebanon, so you're I just came back. <laughs> just came back. That's part of the armor. Brings electricity right to your yeah. home. <laughs> you're welcome. There you go. Yeah. So, well, you you live in Lebanon, so there's going to be a lot of like you know lost potential. <laughs> And a lot of a lot of things you wish you could do. They listen. I've been to Lebanon a few times, and I I I love, I really love Lebanon. Love the Lebanese people. They definitely do a great job. Look, Lebanon does a great job of advertising its culture and society to the rest of the world. Like this is the best place ever. You have to come here. It's amazing. Beirut, Beirut, Beirut. And you know, and you and you go there, and um uh and you and you see very quickly that you know there's some problems and uh <laughs> yeah. and uh, bullshit. That's you know <laughs> you, you see some you, there's some problems some and problem. um you know like like 10 of beirut looks like the french riviera the nicest shit you've ever seen in your life the other 90 looks like it just got bombed yesterday like it just like it just got bombed okay and so um and then you and then you know uh, but and then they still tell you lebanon is the best place ever there is no place better than Lebanon. And then they don't pick up the trash for three years. And then they're like, <laughs> it is amazing. It is great. And then look, I the first time I went to Lebanon, I was staying, I was going there to do shows for a week and I was staying in um, Al Hamra, okay, oh. in uh, East Beirut. And um, and uh, uh, they, took, they took me to the hotel after the airport. I was going to meet some people for dinner. But I got to the hotel and the first thing I want to do is go to the hotel and just wash up, take a shower because I'm about to go meet some people for dinner. I've just been on a really long flight. And so I uh, I uh, uh, go to the hotel. It's a very nice hotel. It's called the Commodore Hotel. Fi, fi Bilhamra. Very nice hotel. Five yeah, star, six star. You know, it's Lebanese. So it's like 10 star, you know, whatever. They just make up fucking <laughs> stars in the Lebanon. So, you know. <laughs> so you give me star 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 and I make my yeah, own star. There's like, you know, uh, so many stars. So um, I get I get to the hotel and, uh, you know, it's, it's a nice hotel, nice room. And I go up to the hotel. It's, it's nighttime and uh, I'm taking a shower 
and um, the lights go out. Okay. Now, <laughs> I, I have been to Palestine a million times. I've been to refugee camps in Palestine. I've done shows in the occupied territories, uh, all, all of occupied Palestine. Guess what? The lights don't go out. Okay. The lights don't go out in uh, occupied. So I didn't know what happened. So I'm now I'm in an Arab country that I've never been in before. I have read a lot of history about Lebanon and the lights went out. I don't know what's happening. What is happening? Has Hezbollah come into Beirut? Are the Israelis <laughs> bombing? You know, I don't know what's happening because, you know, like, but, you know, when when an army invades you, the first thing they do is they cut off the power. You know, they cut off the power so they can invade. So I don't know what's going on. Okay. So like 45 seconds later, um, the lights come back on because, you know, there's mm -hmm. generators. So the lights come back on. And so uh, I, uh, I I finish up. I go down to the, to the front desk and I said, um, hello. And the guy behind the desk said, uh, hello, monsieur. Monsieur Hick, Bechko, we live in Hello, Monsieur. Yeah. Hello, um, it's a little, yeah. Uh, uh, there's something wrong with my room. He said, Yes, sir. I said, Well, uh, the lights went out. He said, uh, Yes, sir. I said, Well, I don't know. Maybe you didn't hear me. I said, I said, The lights, you know, the lights went out. <laughs> lights went out, and I First would time. like a different room. And I would like a different room. <laughs> He said, um, uh, uh, there is nothing wrong with your room. Uh, welcome to Beirut. <laughs> what he said to me. So, uh, you know, so Beirut was amazing, man. But it's it's the you meet the best people and you meet some of the worst people because there is, you know, a, there's no place where I've seen and maybe because of the of. You know, they're just you feel the sectarianism in the air, okay, when you're in Beirut. You feel the the Ta'ifiyi. But what does that create? That means there's some people who are Ta'ifiyin, which is fucked up. You know, the sectarianism is the worst thing that has ever happened to us. Mm -hmm. And then, but some people then also it brings out you have in Lebanon people who are the most um uh uh Arab Komiin people you meet too. You know, so like it brings out both extremes of the most Arab. Mm -hmm. A uh, uh, nationalist, proud, you know, you can go, you can go and find people who are doing something uh, cultural because they hate Arabs and then find like the most tarab, beautiful band playing Arabic music in Beirut because they're so holding on to their culture. You know, like you don't find that, frankly, in a lot of Gulf countries of you don't find this uh, 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 holding on to this beautiful classical Arabic music that had has come around in the last 100, 200 years, it, you know, they play it, but it, there's not this like high celebration of it because the culture is not under attack. You know, that's what happens when your culture is not under attack. Way, I'm really you sorry sort of... to interrupt, but I do want to ask like about yeah. this concept of the, the, the nationalism and like the, yeah. this Arab uh, identity that we have. Yeah. Would you attribute it to maybe, um, so like back back to pan-arabism and uh, the movement that came with uh, gamal abdel nasser and this unification of the arab countries well pan-arabism actually didn't start with gamal abdel nasser pan-arabism started it in is, the sham sure. region with with uh with you know before abdel nasser abdel nasser turned it into a mass abdel nasser is a major figure in the pan-arab movement but the this idea of pan-arabism of Arab culture and the Arabic language and Arab art being at the center of identity actually started out in in the in the Sham region, you know, when everyone was called Syria 100 years ago through literature and other things. And um, and uh, uh, why? Why does it start out in our region? Because, first of all, there's other regions of the Arab world, like the Gulf region, who sometimes <clears throat> would say, you know, we're the real Arabs. And we say, no, we're Arabs too. So we over compensate by saying you know and having these arab nationalist movements uh same thing in egypt you know a lot of times they were called by by other parts of the arab world as not real arabs where egypt you know i mean like two-thirds of the arab world is in africa all right there's tens right. of millions <laughs> yeah. tens of millions of black arabs you know like all these things are true and so the pan-arabism always comes out of the places that is not where sort of Arabs started 1500, 1600 years ago. But that's not what Arab means anymore. Arab doesn't mean anymore that you come from one of the original Arab tribes from Yemen or Saudi Arabia or the Gulf. Like that's not what it means anymore. Arab now means we speak the same language. We come from places that speak that language. So we share art and we share a culture that has created an identity and has created this thing called Arab. You know, it doesn't matter anymore 
what your uh, skin color is or what your what whether you can go back, you know, uh, to the tribes of 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 Yemen. And, and then that's a misconception, too. I mean, there were Arab tribes in Jordan and Palestine 2000 years ago too, the Ghassanids, the the Nabatayin. So anyway, but so these movements came out of these areas. Uh, of of um, of mostly the greater Syria area, and then went over to to Egypt uh, as as a way to have a role in this thing called the Arab world. Right? How do you have a role? Well, you fully exercise your Arab culture. Right? Um, this shows up very much with Christian communities. So, for instance, the Maronite community in Lebanon has said, "We don't want to be Arab," so they go to this thing of like this fake Phoenician thing. It's totally made up. You know, they go to this, we're yeah, Phoenician. It's I completely agree with Made that. up. The Phoenicians, the Phoenicians <laughs> were not even their, well, Phoenicians were not even really their own people. The Phoenicians were Canaanites who, a, a group of Canaanites that were named Phoenicians by the Greeks because they created this purple dye because Phoenicia means purple in Greek. Okay, so I mean, like, let's just all slow down for a second. And then they have, and then, and then they have these, like, um, you know, Phoenician museums and shit. I mean, anyway, it was just a way to avoid saying Arab. Okay, they didn't want to say Arab, so they said Phoenician. But then you have the most, um, 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 uh, some of the most uh, nationalistic Komiyin Arab in the Arab world, and especially in Lebanon, are Orthodox Christians. You know, Orthodox Christians who who want to very clearly say that they're Arab, so they 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 pound the table and they say that we are Arabs and they and they uh, uh, say it very loudly. And by the way, they were doing they've been doing Christ, Orthodox Christians have been doing Christianity for like as long as Jesus, and they've been doing Christianity in Arabic <laughs> since before Islam got there. Okay, so they are oh, true wow. Arabs, but but they are really pushing. Now, why? Because they 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 want to say very the 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 first very first pan Arab movements came out of a lot of it came out of Christian Arab society. Okay, so um, you know the most the most pan Arab Arab nationalist and biggest voice for Arab Americans in the last hundred years in America, Edward Said. Edward Said, who is uh, uh, you know born into a Christian family, wasn't really religious, but born into a Christian family. Uh, the number one Arab literature figure of you know, maybe the last hundred years, especially in America, is Khalil Gibran. Uh, came from a Maronite Christian family, so he he broke away from this idea of we're not Arab, and then very strongly stressed that we're Arab. So there, I think these movements tend to come out of places where Arab identity is threatened, either by your own people or by outside forces. So if there are forces from the Gulf saying we're the real Arabs, then forces in Egypt and Syria might say, no, we're Arabs too. And then they start these pan-Arab movements. Or if places in Lebanon were just internally, now we're just talking about Lebanon, where Arab culture is under attack by a pretty sort of wealthy uh, minority who gets, because of some piece of paper, gets to be the president every year of Lebanon and says, we're not Arab. Then there's going to be other communities in Lebanon who say, no, yes, we are. And so guess how we're going to show it? We're going to have the greatest singers and we're going to have the greatest art and we're going to have, you know, why, why did so much beautiful Arab art mm. come from Lebanon in the last hundred years? Are there just, are there more gifted people in Lebanon than there? I know that's what Lebanese people think. Are there more like <laughs> gifted people in Lebanon than there are other places? No, because Lebanon, especially when it was taken over by the French and then they created this, and then you have the whole uh, identity there that exists with some Maronites. I don't want to say all Maronites, but some Maronites where we're not Arab, right? There becomes this battle. No, we are Arab. And then the Rahbanis make one Arabic song every day for 30 years. And then Fairuz speak, you know, does this and Wadiya Safi. And by the way, who are both Christian, by the way, right? And then and then uh, all these singers started coming out of the Arab of Lebanon. And Lebanon today is still probably today because Egypt has just fallen off, the greatest producer of Arabic music. And 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 you know some of it might be silly. I mean, okay, hey, for some songs by Haifa might be silly, some songs by Nancy Ajra might be silly, but guess what? They are producing shit every single day and the masrahiyat that came out from Ziad Rahbani and all this kind of stuff I mean and then you look at Palestine same thing but it has a different theme right um you know we're always talking we don't have love songs in Palestine you know we just have you know songs about you know land and freedom and all that but it's always Arabic we always talk about uh, 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 our Arab culture you know I mean 
you know, Lebanese, it, it, it just shows you how politics and, and history and imperialism and colonialism can play such a difference. Lebanon and Palestine are two small countries right next to each other. Okay, so it's really the same fucking people. Okay, we're the same people, like yeah. biologically, genetically, we're yeah. the same people. Mm-hmm. But because of what happened the last hundred years, what happens? I mean, you have you have Palestine where everything is about getting back our land and this, and then you have Lebanon where they can celebrate more other things in life. Okay, called it's very Arab too, but other cultures. So, you know, I mean, you go to a Lebanese Lebanese weddings and Palestinian weddings are completely different. I mean, these are people who live 100 miles from each other and the weddings are very different. You go to a Lebanese wedding and you have the whole family dancing around their daughter while they're all literally singing a song about a hoe. Okay, like literally singing a song about a hoe. Like they dance about their daughter, like, We are a good family. We are a very good family. I promise you. She's a virgin. I promise you. She's a virgin. You know? So, you know. Whereas, Can you know, any of you, you go deny to... what he's saying right now? Can any of you no, deny? It's not... I can't deny. No, I can't deny. It's 100% true. And then, and, then you, and, then you go to, and then you go to a Palestinian wedding where it's like sad in a different way. You go to a Palestinian wedding and it starts out normal like any other wedding, but every Palestinian wedding turns into a demonstration like 45 minutes into the wedding because we just can't help ourselves, okay? When we get a lot of Palestinians together. So, you know, it starts out normal, Palestinian wedding, just, you know, <laughs> starts out a normal wedding, but like 45 minutes later, it's everybody on the, <laughs> you're like, isn't this a fucking wedding? I thought we were here to celebrate a wedding. And all of a sudden, you know, people are just, you know, and then the and then the father of the bride comes out in a Palestinian wedding is we'd like to welcome everybody today to the wedding of Kifah and Nidal. We are so happy that you are here with us today. And next year in Jerusalem, you're like, all right, dude, calm down, man. What are you having? Like you're having like some flashback. I don't know what's happening here, but we're just trying to have a wedding, you know. And then all of a sudden it's like, all right, everybody come out to the dance floor where we will have a dance for all the couples. Please, a slow dance. Everybody come out. And then the band. She do me me away. Merkebi. And you're like, wow, I thought this was a fucking wedding. So I mean, you know, it it is it is but it's a hundred times funner than our weddings. I'll, I'll say this like right here on the show. It's a hundred times fun. Because all we do is either we sit down and it's a glorified duania, right? Where all the men are there, and then the family go to the women's section, and it's just the family, not friends, not go to the women's section just so the two can sit next to each other for a few photos then off to the you know airport Listen, i did a, i did a, i did a uh, i did a uh, uh, a show at a golfy wedding one time here in america i won't name the country but i did a show <laughs> at a golfy wedding and literally it's a long room and literally there was a curtain down the middle of the room yep you have women on one side and the women the on one side and the men on one side <laughs> and and i am on the stage that is at the end of the curtain but is on both sides of the curtain <laughs> and so i'm literally sometimes like looking to one side of the curtain or the other side of the curtain and i'm like hey do you guys think that was funny hey ladies over there do you think that was funny and like you know i mean it was the most bizarre thing i've ever seen yeah, in my no, life it's... but you know this like separation of you know it's not yeah, healthy we... separating men from women is not not healthy. I mean, we've I mean, done it for uh, thousands of years, and here we are. We're still, you know, like, well, yeah, you're still here, but I mean, yeah. you know, is it? <laughs> yeah, it's debatable. Healthy? How healthy is this for the, I mean, is it healthy? the community? I, don't I think know. I think it's fine. I think it has nothing to do with health or mental health mm-hmm. because that's that's something that's very. Uh, how do I say this without offending any of you? You know, if, whatever I'll just say. <laughs> um, it's us believe it or not like we've done this for a while this is an american thought or point of view or a western point where women and men have to be with each other they can't no. i mean it's don't say no come on it no is. it's not it's not it's not it's not uh, this is something that arabs do sometimes they think that any sort of like uh, first of all they think that um first of all the arab world today is an extremely wide diverse no extremely wide diverse place with many different um uh forms of arab culture so there's not one form that's number one okay so uh so just because something that is done in kuwait isn't replicated in other parts of the world as much like lebanon or palestine doesn't mean that what's happening in lebanon or palestine is western 
It just means that it's another version of Arab culture. Okay, so so this notion, a notion that separating men and women is an expression of Arab culture, this is not true. So, for instance, but, we don't but, have it. Okay. We don't oh, have any. It no, no, we, in the U.S., uh, like at a certain time before. Sure, this is it's, it's, to do with being it's an expression. Right, it's an expression of sexism or patriarchy, but it's not an expression of Arab culture. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, um, you know, when you look at the the biographies of of the Prophet, the, there was no evidence that in social settings. They were, he separated his wives from people, but they didn't separate men and women completely from each other in social settings like that. Just there's no evidence of that. Uh, uh, the the notion of of um, if you want to go back that far, but even you don't have to go back that far. Go back 60 years ago in Egypt, where you have a a a 65 year old single childless woman who is the most famous singer in the whole history of the Arab world named Im Kaltum, standing on a stage singing to people who are who are uh, with their man, the man with his wife, a couples going out and listening to her in a theater. And no one's no one is super religious. Are they are they doing something Western? No, they're not. She was she was very Arab, singing very Arabic songs. In I, fact, Im Kaltum used to refuse to have many Western instruments in her songs until Abdul Wahab came along and he just did it so good that she kind of had to have them. But she refused Abdul Wahab for a long time because precisely because he entered some like guitar and stuff into his songs. And so she was very Arab, very strong. This is a very Arab exercise they're doing with Arab music and Arab scales. And and what? Because they're bringing men and women together and because she's on stage and she's not married and she's whatever. And some people thought maybe she was gay, you know, whatever. doesn't matter. All this kind of all of a sudden. Not I'm not saying you're saying this, Ali, but I'm just saying that's a non-Arab activity. No, it's a very Arab activity. It might be done a little bit differently than they might do it in Kuwait or Yemen or Morocco. But it's a very Arab activity. So we have to be clear to say just because something deviates a little bit from one thing in our culture doesn't mean so this notion of bringing men and men and women together is Western. It's not Western. OK, can I can I, do I get the chance to respond? Here we go. Um, especially for our parts of the world, this this is something that's not new. And it was it used to be a thing back in Syria, Lebanon, Jordan, and all these different countries, right? Where there was a period of time, Iran, a very, yeah. very long period of time where men and women were segregated, right? In different rooms. And then slowly it started happening. So that's why, I don't know where I'm going with this. Listen, I'm literally waiting for like <laughs> 20 minutes. <laughs> I'm very excited right now. Uh, yeah, but the separation of men and women is not an Arab thing. That's the point. The separation of men and women is because it, it happened in every part of the world. True. It's a patriarchal, well, misogynistic, yeah. sexist thing, but it's mm -hmm. not an Arab thing. And so and my point is, when you think of it as an Arab thing, then you're going to say, OK, when they don't separate men and women, it must be a Western or anti-Arab thing. It's not it, because okay. the whole the separation of men and women wasn't an Arab thing. OK, so, that's fine. That's my point. But like <laughs> hummus is an Arab thing. Okay. Hummus is an Arab thing. So when other people take it, we go, okay, that's messed up. Don't take our thing. But sexism or or not sex, <laughs> separating men and women is not an Arab thing. I mean, for instance, Orthodox Jews in Europe have sex between a sheet so that they don't see each other's genitals and don't see each other naked. You know, I mean, so like, that's that's just retarded. That's just no, that's, oh, that's just OK. But I'm, my po my point is like this. How? The idea of like the sacredness of uh, bodies and like you don't get, get people. Well, I'm, I'm just saying the whole general idea of this thing is not an Arab thing. It's not something unique to us. And so and, and so criticizing it or doing something different from it or doing something even the opposite of it then doesn't mean that you're doing an anti-Arab thing. But who okay? said it has to be unique to be ours? Uh, think about it, Ali. Think about it. We are out of time. Of course we, we are. wrap up right now. Yes, we've been uh, going on this for oh. an hour. But it's good. Thank you so much, Ahmed. Okay, I'm sure you guys will edit this and make it sound all nice and whatever, you know. But don't worry about it. No, we, I'm not. If you actually watch, as it is, no, don't yeah, worry exactly. about it. Don't worry about if it. If you watch our videos, we actually we don't edit. Uh, yeah, we uh, really don't like to edit anything. <laughs> we like to keep it as natural. So, but other than that, thank you for watching another episode of A to the Show. Uh, so sorry much. to have to cut out awesome. our conversation this short. We will try to do a part two, maybe. Amr, what do you say? 
I mean, this is the most anti-Arab thing that you're actually staying to time. They're actually saying like, you know, <laughs> oh, it's a, you know, you're there. You're actually like an hour means an hour. You know? <laughs> an hour means an hour. I mean, that's, <laughs> you know? I mean, I would go on for a bit, but I'm this kinda, you know, is I'm dying of starvation. This is Listen. anti-Arab racism. I am <laughs> dying of starvation <laughs> here. Show. I want to go and eat. <laughs> Okay, that's, you're not is... dying of starvation, okay? the peop There's people in Gaza dying of starvation. That's true. You that's could be fine for another couple hours, okay? Uh, okay. <laughs> I mean... it. This is, subscribe to A2. Uh, you know what? Subscribe to A2 the show. Subscribe, everybody, please subscribe to A2 the show. These guys are doing a great job. Follow them everywhere. They have wonderful guests every week. We have with you this week, Saeed Jamal, Ali Shamari, and Ali Heji, all joining you from different parts of the world. We're very... You're all joining us this week. Our guest was Amir Zahra, a renowned Arab American comedian and academic who's been around the world traveling everywhere. He's even been to Lebanon. He's been to Palestine. He's been to Kuwait, where he almost got arrested for telling a joke about the Virgin Mary. Now, we would really love what? for everybody to you did what? have a great time. Please subscribe, like, share it everywhere, and let everyone know that there are Arabs doing amazingly great things around the world. Yes. alaikum wa Ramadan kareem. Thank you for watching another episode of A to the Show. This is <laughs> us. No, the, their outro for us, which is great. You can find Almer's links in the description below. Go follow him in every social media below. platform. Thank you to our very own Saeed Jamal for coming on the show. Boys, men, peace, love, happiness. We'll see you.